Alrighty, so welcome back. I hope you've been enjoying the series. This series has been all about mindset and getting in the zone of really enjoying being single, enjoying the process and eventually meeting someone amazing. So it's been about tackling some bad mindsets that we have towards dating, focusing on some positive action steps you can take, and most importantly, how to have the right perspective on your dating life. In this final section of this video series, we're just going to look at a few simple processes you can start to employ. These are simple changes, but they do make a difference in terms of how enjoyable you're going to find your dating life. So the first one is taking longer to choose. I think when we uh, get to a boom bust cycle around dating, it's when you will meet someone, you'll be like, oh my gosh, they seem amazing. He seems great. Hallelujah. My prayers are answered. My problems are solved. And then suddenly it's like, oh, it's like he's got an expiry date or something and the whole thing falls apart. So a lot of it is actually taking a step back and realizing this isn't men deliberately trying to mess you around or manipulate you. It's not that you're just like a horrible judge of character. Instead, a good mindset and outlook to have here is it is just really hard to tell what someone's about in the first few dates. It takes time to get to know someone. So you have to accept that in those early dating stages, you are just inevitably in the unknown because you just you just don't know, right? Like you don't know how this is going to unfold. So with that acceptance that you're in the unknown, think about how much you want to give to this dating experience. So you're three dates in, how physically intimate you want to be, how often you want to see a person, um, how open you want to be about your life. Give that in proportion or under the understanding of, I just don't know this person that well yet. Even if we've had three incredible dates, it's just three dates. So how do I keep my feet on the ground here? Because really it's not that someone changes, it's that you get to know them better. So how can you take longer to choose? In fact, it's so important I'm going to say it again. It's not that someone changes, it's that you get to know them better. So how can you take longer to get to know someone and take and have really higher standards before you choose that this is someone that you want to commit to. Like commitment is a big deal. It's not something you have to chase. Like commitment means a lot more responsibility. Often it means family. It means tying your lives together. It means mortgages. It means babies. It's like, it's like big life stuff. So you don't want to just do that with just anyone. <laughs> you know, you really want to choose an amazing partner and teammate. And you're not in a rush. Remember, going back to what I said in the first session here, uh, and the link to all the videos from the session will be beneath this one. Um, remember, you are not in a rush to choose. In fact, taking longer to choose can be one of the best things you can do for your dating life. Uh, another simple um, good thing that you could do for your dating life is, and I know I would almost cry if I saw this, I'd be like, oh, gratitude, I hate gratitude. Like, I would so like, ugh you know, I'm allowed to feel annoyed. And yes, you are allowed to feel annoyed about your dating experiences. And I'm not saying that you haven't had some pretty crummy dating experiences. I have been there myself. It was not fun. And I know how um, demotivating that can be. However, let's get some gratitude going. It's like, instead of being like, God, all these people let me down, how can we get into a better mindset around that? So it could, ideally, don't mind it tricky, if you've had some bad experiences, I want you to step towards more neutrality. So, they, And that's really not because you're letting someone off the hook for how they treated you. It's just you don't want these previous experiences to still be messing with your day-to-day -day life. You could just be like, you know what? It didn't work out. He wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I probably should have gotten out sooner. Yes, he mistreated me. That wasn't great, but I learned my lessons there. And ultimately, I'm stronger now and I've moved on. That might not be where you are right now. And you might need to think of a more authentic way you could chalk up those past experiences. But that's the end goal where we're going towards. It's like, I accept that that happened. I accept if this is true, my share of responsibility for it. I also accept that it wasn't entirely negative, that there were some things that I learned from it or some things that I gained. Um, this could even be the mindset you have towards dates that are a bit, you know, you might go on a date and you're excited about it because you're chatting on the apps, it seems good. And then you meet him and you're just like, oh, there's just no vibe in real life. Again, instead of being like, oh, that didn't, he's not the one, like big standard for someone to meet, right? Instead, you could be like, well, you know what? 
he set a great precedent for me in terms of he was really respectful. I really liked how he interacted with me. I really liked how he set up the date. This is my new standard for how I want men to interact with me. And I'm not going to assume that he's the only man alive that has those qualities. There's going to be guys out there who have those good qualities, but also who I feel more attracted to or have a bit more connection with. So again, abundance, 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 abundance. Like there is so many good people out there for you. So we're going to have acceptance for things that didn't go well. We're going to start to have gratitude for what our dating experiences do offer us. And you're certainly not going to go into dates with this binary outlook of is this the one or is this not the one? Because that's going to make you obviously feel uh, demotivated pretty fast. Instead, remember, if something doesn't work out, you're actually not back at square one. You're going to take those lessons and you're going to actually, it means that the next person you interact with, you're going to be that bit more, bit more sharp and aware of what you really need to be happy. The final easy fix here is the art of letting stuff go. And I remember speaking to a yoga teacher about this once. And they're like, oh, well, letting it go is so easy. And I think they dramatically dropped a, a napkin on the table to show just how easy letting go was. And at the time, I was having real trouble letting go. And I was like, it is not easy. So again, it is about getting back to this state of mind that a good barometer for whether it's a good relationship or a good connection, something worth, I'm not even going to say fighting for, because you don't have to really fight for relationships. It should just be mutual effort. It shouldn't be that much of a struggle that it's a full bone fight. fight. It's like, does this feel easy? Is communication easy? Is the flow of a relationship easy? Do we naturally want to spend roughly the same amount of time together? Do we have roughly the same outlook on commitment? Like ease, 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 ease is important in relationships. If the person you are dating or you've got a situationship that is not characterized by ease, in fact, it's characterized by difficulty, it's like turbulent. It's on and off. You're crying. He's like, he makes you feel bad. He doesn't want commitment. It's confusing. It's a gray area. Um, it just feels like you're constantly, you've got such an amazing connection, but then it's never quite right. Just let it go. Uh, and I know you say, might not be the day to hear this. And you may be a sick and tired. In fact, you might be even annoyed at your friends for telling you that you have to, you know, get rid of him. And it's, it, of course, it's easier for them to say that. So right now, it's just important to hold the idea that if this isn't characterized by ease, that you can actually experience that connection you have or a different version of connection, which is going to be equally valid. It's just going to be like, instead of having red wine, you have white wine instead. It's like, it's, it might not be the same connection, but you can have an equally important, interesting connection with someone else who also doesn't have the complexity of this situation. So I know it's hard. Um, in economics, there's a term called sunk cost fallacy, which basically means like the more you put into something, the more you become invested in the outcome of it. Like the more you try, the more you want to see it come right. But unfortunately it's like sunk cost sometimes you have to go you know what yep that was six months that you know i put into this relationship yes i you know allowed my, yes i've i've fallen for him yes you know i've got a drawer of socks and bras at his house that i'm gonna have to collect yes he's helped me out with this work project and that's gonna be awkward to like you know you know, disentangle that, but oh my gosh, your future self is going to be very grateful for you, to you for being brave and taking the action step you need because, oh my gosh, when you are in a bad relationship, you are two steps away from a good one. When you're single, you are just one sweet step away. So it's hard. Today might not be the day to address this, but letting go of old attachments, getting over it, is a key part to you starting to enjoy single life. And I've got so much more advice I want to give you. I realized I didn't make enough slides. I should have just continued coaching you here for a long time, um, but it hasn't happened today. So uh, all I will say is this, is if you are here for it, if you really would love to learn how to enjoy dating again, if you're really ready to be really accountable and to take responsibility for your dating life yourself, head over to um, hayleyquinn.com forward slash real love. The link is below in the bio. Join our community, sign up for our newsletter, you get lots of free stuff, free webinars. But more than the free stuff, you also get to start on this journey of accountability and self-exploration in the area of dating. So I hope to see you there. Um, 
I'm sending you lots of love. And I also hope you check out the other videos in this series. Um, there's a bunch of them. Head over to my YouTube channel and you can find them out. So enjoy. And I look forward to coaching and working with you very soon.